Okay, good morning, Riders Hayes. Um, uh, all the time, if you've got any questions, if you want to ask uh, Mrs. Rapsworthy Cooper to type them in, we would love to have as much interaction as possible. So if you've got any questions for Matt, please type them in. Um, he loves questions. I do. So I'm going to ask him two to start with, and then he's going to give us um, a talk on black holes. We're going to have some pictures, and then you uh, can free fall to ask him anything about himself, his career, his science, and black holes, if he's inspired any things that you want to know. So we're going to start now. Um, anybody who wants to type a question in, just type them in, and I will be able to see them and direct our questions to Matt. So... Matt, first of all, tell us about yourself. What do you do and where did you come from? <laughs> so uh, my name is Matt and so I'm actually originally from Bristol, uh, but I've been in Cardiff now for about 10 years. So I went to university here in Cardiff. Um, I studied physics and astrophysics here. So I did mm -hmm. all my university here um, and then I went to work for someone called the European Space Agency. So if you've heard of NASA before, NASA is kind of the space agency for America and the European Space Agency is the same thing, but in Europe. So that was really cool. So I worked on a, a satellite there for a year, which is really, really exciting. Can I, can I stop you there? Can you explain? So you did physics, so but what is astrophysics? So it's basically all the bits of physics are all about space. So looking at things like stars, like the sun, planets, um, galaxies, nebula, black holes, all those kind of things. Anything that's to do with space is what astrophysics is. Some people call it astronomy as well, um, but yeah, astronomy and astrophysics are kind of the same thing, basically. Okay, so we've got to then work with the European equivalent of NASA. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Okay. Really cool. Um, yeah, so I did that for a year, um, and then I came back and did um, what's called a PhD. So you do like a really, um, like an interesting study. So you look at one really interesting thing for about four years, and then you go off on your own and you really study this thing and learn all about it. And then you have to write a really, really long document at the end, which is okay. the most fun part. But the research part, studying it is really, really good. So does that mean you are Dr. Matt Allen? I am, so I am Dr. Matt Allen. Congratulations. So thank you very much, yeah. So that's Matt's background. That's why he's an expert today on our Space Link webinar. Again, any questions you've got about PhDs, NASA, crikey, um, black holes, just pop them in and we will answer them. So I've got some questions. What made you become a scientist? Why did you fancy doing science? Um, so when I was about 10 or so, um, my parents bought me a telescope. It wasn't even that amazing a telescope, but it was really good. Uh, and I remember going out one night and pointing it up at Saturn, so one of the planets in our solar system. Um, and it's really amazing. Like Even with a really not very good telescope, actually see the rings of Saturn. So Saturn has these really amazing rings around it. And you can actually just see that with a really with a telescope. telescope. You can even see it with a pair of binoculars actually, a really good pair of binoculars you can see it. And I just it blew my mind that I could see this planet that was millions and millions of miles away um, with these really incredible rings and I could just see it with my back garden. Um, and then that really inspired me to get into kind of space. Um, and then I did my GCSEs um, and I did my A-levels um, and I chose to do physics at A-level. Um, so I did physics, maths and um, computing. Um, so I really wanted to go in into kind of physics and space at university. Yeah, and it just really inspired me. So that, that one moment was really kind of the starting point. Okay, so cool. So the rings on Saturn. So I don't know if you heard them, but he's saying that with a pair of binoculars, you can see the rings on Saturn. So they should be able to go out and give that a try. And how big was your telescope? You said not very good test, but how big was it? Um, it, it was well, so only a proper about, small one. Yeah, yeah, really, really not a very good one at all. Okay. I don't want to sound too crystal. Yeah. My, my parents' <laughs> Christmas present to me, but uh, but yeah, definitely a good, a, a normal pair of binoculars. Okay, um, so really good. So type in Mrs. Um, Braxworthy Cooper. Have your kids ever seen the rings on Saturn, and would they want to have a go? We'd love to. I don't know if any of them have indeed seen it. So that's the moment that inspired Matt to get into science. Um, now, my next question, Matt, was going to be about your favourite part of um, space science. But before we do that, let's go on and you talk to us for a little bit about black holes, because that might inspire some questions from the kids. Um, so I'm just going to move over onto the... Um, pictures what is it like to fall into a black hole so over to you we can't actually see the comments now for a bit but we'll collect them in the end so if you've got any questions 
keep telling Mrs. Raxwood the Cooper and we can address them at the end. So over to you, Matt. So black holes are these really amazing things. So some of you might have been before, maybe you haven't. So stars. So stars are like our sun, um, and some stars like our sun are really kind of normal size, some are much smaller, some are actually massive, really, really huge stars. When these stars reach the end of their lives, after billions and billions of years, what sometimes happens is at the end they collapse upon themselves. So these really huge stars become really, really, really small. And if they become small enough, they form what's called a black hole. So a black hole is a very, very small, small thing in space, but really heavy. Heavier, way heavier than our sun, but really, really small. In fact, if you manage to make the Earth into a black hole, so you have to squash the Earth all the way down, so all the matter, all the weight in the Earth, you squash it down to the size of a pea, so just a garden wow. pea, that's what it would be, a black hole. So if you could then lift up that black hole, it weighs as much as the entire Earth, but it's only got the same size as a pea. So this is what we're talking about, really massive objects become really, really small. The reason they're called black holes is because they're so heavy that they suck everything into them. So they suck planets, stars, dust, gas, everything. But they also are so small that they suck in light. So all the light around them gets sucked in. And that's so why the they're size of a pea, but suck in all the light. Essentially, yeah. But the black holes we're talking about are even bigger. So right. they're absolutely massive. So normally when they come from stars, they're really big. Okay, so the Earth, if it was a black hole, would yeah. be a pea. But a star, if it's, it was a black hole, is massive. Yeah. <laughs> More massive ones. Oh, hello, Mr. Norman. Hello. Hello. Oh my gosh, how exciting. Um, oh. Hello, guys. Um, so, Mr. Norman. Hello. Uh, sorry, we had wrongly assumed that you were not coming because of the um, internet problems, but I'm very excited to see you all. Give Matt a wave. <laughs> can you hear us okay? Yeah, we can yeah. hear you. Fabulous. Right, we haven't done very much, um, so I'm just going to invite Matt to say what you did again. I'm sorry, okay. It was very interesting anyway. Let's recap that, and then if you've got any questions, Mr. Norman, we're going to be collecting them at about, about the end, of, so you can ask about this topic or anything about Matt, and I can easily cover the other questions again. Okay, so. Matt, let's start again. So Matt is talking about what it's like to fall into a black hole. Off you go, from the top. No worries. So black holes are these really, really, really massive objects. So stars, stars like our sun, when they reach the end of their life, and really, really big stars collapse from themselves. They have really, really massive stars, really huge ones, and they squash all the way down to become really, really small. So. In fact, if you uh, make the Earth into a black hole, you'd have to get the entire Earth, you'd have to squash it down, make it really, really small, so it's the same size as a pea. Oh. It's a normal garden pea. But it'd be the same size as a pea, but it'd be as heavy as the entire Earth. So if you tried to pick it up, it'd be really, really small, but it'd be the entire weight of the Earth. So it'd be really, really heavy. So that's basically what a black hole is. You get something really, really big, really, really big. So the black holes that come from stars, black holes normally come from actually bigger than a pea, um, but they're not that much bigger. Um, they're about the same size as a small small town. So they're still, considering how big the sun is, they're actually still really, really small in comparison. So like the size of Cardiff? Then, yeah, basically, yeah. So if you come down to somewhere around the same size as Cardiff, um, that basically then it would be very much like okay. But we have some black holes that are even bigger, so really, really, really huge ones. Um, so there's lots of size black holes. Can we see them with a telescope? No, so that's a really right. interesting thing. So black holes are so-called black because we can't see them because they're actually pure black. So the reason why is because, because they're so heavy, they suck everything into them. They're like giant vacuums. So they suck in planets that go near, stars, gas, dust, anything. But they're so, so strong, they're so heavy. But they also suck in light that goes by. So if you try and look at a black hole, you can't see it because it sucked all the light in around it and it just makes a big black hole in space. So it's actually interesting, we actually almost kind of first saw our first in a way, but we have to do this really um, and actually in the network, you will be able to see a picture of what the first black hole we ever took a photo of. But again, it looks a little bit weird. We can't take the normal camera. Right, because of the light. 
basically, yeah, yeah there's kind of nothing secret. We have to be just really clever things to be able to see it. Um, but yeah, so that's what a black hole is. It's really, really massive, really heavy things, but really, really small. So what I'm going to talk to you guys uh, about today is what it would be like if you actually fell into the black hole. So, black holes, again, we have these, these big black holes you can't see in the center. Because they suck everything in around them, they form these big clouds and these disks around them, which is what you can see in this picture here. So all this bright stuff is actually gas and dust, lots of things that are swirling around and around the black hole. And because these black holes are so massive, they actually cause all this gas and dust to spin and spin around it. Is that okay? Before you fell into the black hole, the first thing you see would be something like this screen. So you see a black hole right at the centre. It's this big cloud of bright gas and dust falling into the black hole. And it's really, really bright. And the reason why it's so bright and so easy, it's really hot. So if you go to your oven at home, you can see that your oven goes to about 250 degrees. So that's pretty hot, it's really, really hot. You won't want to put your hand in it or touch it because it'd be really, really hot. Our sun, so the oven's about 250, our sun is about 6,000 degrees. So it's way hotter, really, really hot. Now, our sun is incredibly hot. But actually, black holes in the material around them are even hotter. So the temperature of the gas and dust around a black hole is actually 1 million degrees. 1 million degrees. 1 million degrees. That's one and then six zeros after it. So compared to your oven that's only 250 degrees, black holes are way, way hotter. It's probably on the hottest thing you can find. It's really, really hot. That's why the gas and dust around it is all really nice and bright. So the next thing you do is after you fall into a black hole, um, you reach something called the photon sphere. It's a weird name, but don't worry what it is. But what's really interesting here is I told you that black holes suck all the light around them into it. But actually, if you're like far enough away, it flies by a black hole and it goes straight by and it won't be affected by it. What this means is there's a really unique place around a black hole where light can't quite go fast enough to go away from the black hole, but it's a little bit too slow. Uh, it's, little, it's not quite fast enough to go away, but it's a little bit too fast into the black right, hole. Right, I see. It's yeah. kind of like a really unique place where the light actually just kind of goes all the way around the black hole, and spinning around it almost forever, basically. All the light just spins around it, never quite falls in and never quite escapes. So what's really interesting is when you get to this point, if you look forward, you'd actually see the light that came off of the back of you all the way around the black hole, I would come back and you'd actually see it in front of your eyes. So for this one small moment, you actually be able to see the back of your own head in front of you. It's absolutely mind-blowing. It's this really weird thing where, again, if you look forward, you'd be able to see the back of yourself. That's travelled millions of miles. Yeah, it's yeah, gone all the way around miles. the black hole and you actually see yourself falling in the black hole Forever and ever. Basically, it's this really, really weird, crazy place. Um, when you put a penny in and it goes round, around, 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 or and they've got it in the swimming pool, haven't they? The big bowl. You don't go around forever, but yeah. like four times. Basically. It's a bit like that. Yeah. So that's what the light is. It spins all the way and away and around. As you go through it, light back in you would go all the way around the black hole, and all the way back around to where you are. As you go. The light in the back of you, so you get to the back of your own head. And you'd be a million degrees. Yeah. You'd be so very, very hot. Yeah. Not actually doing much seeing. Yeah, so a lot of this, uh, a lot of these things, you wouldn't have actually got. Most humans would be able to quite get to this point because um, you would have gone through some really crazy kind of things beforehand. But assuming you haven't been burnt by all the gas and dust, it's a million degrees. thing called the photon sphere. It's kind of the point where you can see the back of your own head. So that's the photon <laughs> Yeah. Very cool. Nope. Next thing is something called the event horizon. So this is kind of the point of the event horizon, an area around black hole. You can't get away. 
So again, if you're really far away from the black hole, you're going to go past and escape from it. The closer and closer you get towards a black hole, you have to go faster and faster to get away from it. There's one point where you're going to go past the hill, even if you're going really, really far, the faster thing is away from it. This is a thing called the event horizon. The picture you can see on the screen, this is the thing I seen earlier. So this is the first picture I've ever taken of an actual black hole. In fact, it's the only one you've ever taken. And you think it looked really cool, right? And you kind of saw those pictures of black holes I showed you earlier, but they were kind of drawn by um, artists or by computers. So this is the only picture we ever have of a black hole. The only one. So not just the, the first, only one. the only yeah. one. And we only got this a few years ago. So all that bright orange ring around the outside, that's things like that bright, hot gas and dust. And that little black kind of splodge that's in the middle, that's actually that thing that's called the event horizon. The reason it's black there is the light that's in here can't get back out for us to be able to see it. It's not black, so we can't see it at all. So does anybody know what's inside that? No, so this is what's really interesting, is that not only can we not see what's going on inside, but we could send someone in, assuming someone could get past this really hot gas and dust, we could send someone in, but they could never get back out. Shout and tell us. Even their shout, even their Sounds voice, just... would get sucked back in. Gosh. So there's nothing, there's no way that you went to no way we'd be able to tell anyone. So scientists got computer models and all these really complicated things to try and guess what's inside. Um, and we have kind of we have an idea of what's inside, but again, never really. Heard. So the next cool thing, actually. So the next cool thing has got a really cool name. So I've given these really kind of boring names so far. Kids. But the next thing is something called spaghettification. Which is a real science word. This is actually what scientists use. Spaghettification. Spaghettification. What happens is if you're falling, gravity, the pull of the black pulls you really, really hard, right? And if you're falling first, get pulled than your head would. And what this does is it stretches you out. But it doesn't just stretch you a little bit. It stretches you and stretches you and keeps stretching you. So it makes you really, really long and really, really thin. And probably is not something that you'd find very happy in, not something <laughs> you might uh, kind of make out of. You get stretched really, really, really thin. And so you almost have a long piece of spaghetti. So imagine yeah, a normal human being being stretched really, really thin, really, really long, like a long piece of spaghetti. And that's what would happen if you go into a black hole. You manage to survive all the other bits yeah, until yeah. now. You'd, you'd uh, get affected by the spaghettification, which again is a proper scientific word. It's what scientists use to describe things that fall into black holes. And has anybody ever seen that? No, so, so that's, a, that's a theoretical. Yeah, yeah, so we know how much you'd be pulled yeah. in. Uh, and so it's, yeah, it's theoretical. And theoretical means that they think that happens, but nobody can be sure. But they've done the math, they've done the thinking, and that's what they think. <laughs> But all you remember is there's a very, very small part of the all of the black hole is actually in this very, very small area. So it's not like Earth or like us, where we're really big and all of us is really heavy. Actually, the black hole is this very, very small point right at the centre that has all of the weight, all of the mass, all of the heaviness of the black right. hole. And it's when I told you a minute ago that the gas and dust around a black hole is about one million degrees, the centre of the black hole is an infinite temperature. <laughs> Very, very small, but incredibly hot, hottest thing you can ever think of. And again, scientists have no idea what this is like. No, scientists don't really know what happened if you ever reach the yeah. centre of a black hole. Again, they, they do these theories, these ideas of what it could be, but they don't really know. So that's what it'd be like to fall into a black hole. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, right, I think um, Year five, Riders Hayes, we can now see you on the screen twice. So if you can hear us and you've got any questions, please text them in. 
St. David's, if you'd like to raise your hand, um, we can get Mr. Norman to feed back the questions to Matt. So this is, because um, we missed the start, this is Dr. Matt Allen. He's an amazing, fascinating expert on space who works in Cardiff University. So if you've got any questions about black holes or about Matt, please type them in or put your hands up. Any questions? Norman, you feed them into me. question. How many black holes do you think there is each year? Yeah, well, so there are lots and lots of black holes. So um, there are millions and millions of them. Um, and in our galaxy, um, so our galaxy can, uh, is called the Milky Way. If you've ever heard of the Milky Way before, so that's our galaxy. It contains our star and all the other stars, all the other suns that we can see. <laughs> In our galaxy, we don't make many black holes each year, but there are probably thousands and thousands of them already, because once a black hole is made, actually, it almost lasts forever. So and you can't see it. And you can't, can't see it. it. This is the problem. But there's loads and loads more galaxies throughout the universe, and all of them have black holes in. So. There's probably a lot, a lot of black holes being made every single year, and there's probably millions and billions of them all the way out of the universe. So lots of they're very hard to count. But yeah, very hard to count because they're very hard to find. Okay, any other questions? Jay, is there a question? Um, is there any, um, what, do you know what's inside of the black hole? No, so we have no idea. So scientists um, like myself and everyone here at Cardiff University try and come up with these ideas for what they think could be inside. They use lots of really, really complicated maths and lots of really complicated science, but we can never see what's inside one. Um, and even if we could see what's inside, because it stuck everything in, we can never shout back out or tell someone what we saw. Um, so we'll probably never be able to know exactly what's inside, but we kind of use some really cool maths to try and have an idea of what it is. Um, but yeah, it's a bit of a mystery, which is why that's so exciting. Yeah, yeah, intriguing. Right, any more? Okay, sure. How are black holes made? Uh, how are they made? So black holes are made when you have really, really big stars. So our sun is a star, like all the stars you see in the night sky, and our sun is a pretty normal kind of size star. But when you get really big stars, there are stars much bigger than our own star, sometimes at the end of their lives they squash all the way down really quickly these massive stars squash to be really really small and when you squash a really big star to make it really really small it makes a black hole in the center so the star basically turns into a black hole so the star when it's finished burning and yeah. finished being a star that's the end of its life and it just collapses into this black hole so that's how they're how they're made does that make sense yeah okay right any more um, how big is a black hole? Well, it's really interesting. So some of them can be, um, so again, if our sun turned into a black hole, so it probably won't, but uh, it's a little bit too small. But if our sun turned into a black hole, the black hole would be about the same size as Cardiff. So it's about the same size as the city. But I told you uh, about galaxies. So our galaxy is the Milky Way. Um, and at the center of all galaxies, there's something called a supermassive black hole. So normal black holes might be about the same size as a city, but these supermassive black holes are huge. They're bigger than stars. They're bigger than our entire solar system. They are absolutely huge. They are unbelievably big. Um, I couldn't even tell you how big they are. They're absolutely massive. And then we have lots of ones in between as well. So we have lots of different sized black holes, um, depending on kind of how big the star was that made them. Um, and as black holes suck in lots of material as they do, they get bigger and bigger. So they're kind of like uh, something like, you know, they basically eat everything around them. Yeah. And every time they eat, they get bigger and bigger. And they spaghettify it first. It's, yes. Yeah. Spaghettify it, all the stuff. Heat it up to a million it. degrees, spaghettify it, yes. and then suck it in. Exactly. Okay. Right. One, any more questions? How do you know that you get spaghettified? So this is again is something that scientists can uh, use some really cool maths to work out. So they can work out how how much these black holes pull on things as they uh, as they suck them in. So the reason why if you jump up and then you fall back down again to Earth, that's gravity. So that's a, a force. It's something that pulls us back down to Earth. 
And the same thing happens is that a black hole pulls things into it, it pulls dust and planets and everything. And scientists can use some really clever equations, really clever kind of maths to work out if a human fell in, how much force, how much it pull on their feet compared to how much it pull on their head. And that difference is it's actually quite big. So they know that they pull on their feet a lot more. So their feet really, really fast and their head's not in as much. And so what it does is it acts to stretch them out. Is it the same as G-force on a plane? When, do you know when you're flying and it's like you're going so fast, is that, that's a yeah. measure. Of, so we just know magnified by a thousand, it yes, would pull your exactly. feet. Yeah, yeah. or you're on a roller coaster. Yeah. And, yeah, and when you roll a coaster and it like pulls you back, you go really, really fast. Same kind of thing. Cool, thank you. Nice. Right, um, any more? Mena? Would you say the smallest black hole is bigger than the sun? Wait, would you say, would you say the smallest black hole is bigger than the sun? Uh, no, so the smallest black hole will uh, still be smaller than the sun. It'll actually still be a lot smaller. Um, it's, I don't know what the smallest black hole would definitely be smaller than the sun. Um, it might be smaller than the earth or somewhere around the same size of the earth, something like that. So still massive. Still really, really yeah. big. Yeah. Okay. Brilliant. Yes. Uh, um, has anyone uh, been trapped in a black hole? That's a really good question. So space is really big. It's really hard to describe how big space is. The black holes are really, really big, and our sun is big, but space is even bigger. In fact, it's the nearest black hole to us is so far away. Um, that we would definitely never be able to get to it. Um, our spaceships don't go anywhere near fast enough to be able to go to them. So the furthest place that um, humans have ever really gone to is the moon, and the moon is really, really close to us. We've had some satellites or some little spacecraft um, without humans on, and they've got to the edge of our solar system, so they've gone beyond um, sort of Neptune, Uranus, and Pluto, and they've even further than that. But black holes, the nearest black hole, is much, much further away than that. So we'd never really be able to get to a black hole. So we've never visited one so far. And we probably won't be able to. Not for a long time anyway. Yeah, because they're just so far away. Yeah. Okay. Yes, any more questions? Shane? Um, is there a chance that any planet would be sucked in by a black hole? Yeah, <laughs> So uh, what it could be is that one big star has lots of planets around it. So our star, our sun, has eight planets around it. Uh, the Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, and so on. But most other stars in the universe, all the ones you can see in the night sky, most of those have planets around them as well. So sometimes if one of those stars is really, really big, and then it collapsed upon itself into a black hole, what could then happen is if that had any planets around it beforehand, those planets would then be sucked in. Who knows? Maybe those planets have aliens or life on them as well. We haven't seen any, but they might do. They might have some really interesting things on them. They might be sucked into a black hole. So yeah, it could, it could definitely happen. When, when things that are orbiting the black hole, when the centre of things get sucked in, do the other things become closer? Is it like a sheet? It's like... No, it's actually, like... it's really interesting. So if our sun actually got turned into a black hole right now, so our sun does something just being turned into a black hole, Actually, we'd still keep going around it exactly like we were at the moment, because um, it's only the kind of the weight or how heavy the sun is, and that, um, that sort right, of decides how much you go weigh. around it, and it still have the same weight. So what could happen is something could knock into that planet or something that could make it fall into the black right. hole. But actually, yeah, if our sun suddenly turned to a black hole right now, it'd get really dark, we wouldn't have any light, but actually, <laughs> We just keep going around it like normal. No light, no warmth, but no, we'd be fine. We'd, we'd keep be going okay around. for a while. Right, let's take um, two more and then I'm going to move on to talking about math in general. Hello? Do we need black holes? I like them. Um, I guess we don't need them, so we don't use them for anything. Uh, but the reason why we study them, the reason why we want to know more about them, is because it tells us more about um, sort of what we call the life of stars. So when stars are made, so these big clouds of gas um, and these big clouds of gas turn into stars, stars get older and older, they tend to get bigger and bigger and bigger, and then they turn into black holes. So by understanding black holes, we actually learn more about the life of stars. We, we understand more about their kind of birth, their lives, and their, their 
their death, basically. So we don't need black holes, um, but they're a really good way for us to understand um, more about um, how, what the life of stars are, basically, yeah. So many questions. One more. Um, but do stars get older and older? Like, where, when they get older, they get bigger and bigger. Does that mean over time the sun will get bigger and bigger and get hotter and hotter? Yeah, really, really good question. So, uh, our sun is about halfway through its life, um, but stars last billions and billions of years, a really, really long time, much longer than we'll ever see it. Um, and actually our sun is, is slowly getting bigger, um, but towards the end of its life, it will get much bigger, much quicker. Um, and actually the sun will get so big that actually the earth will basically be swallowed up by it. So if you have the earth, sun here and the earth here at the moment, the sun will get so big oh, no. that it's actually all the way to the size of where the earth is and probably a little bit bigger as and well. And will it get hotter as well? Before, um, before we get sucked in, it will get warmer because the sun's bigger? Yeah, it might also, um, yeah, it'll probably get, uh, it'll change its temperature slightly. Sometimes it'll get hotter, right. sometimes a bit cooler. Um, and yeah, so what it will mean is that um, cold planets at the moment, so like, um, Uranus and Neptune that are really far away from the sun, that are really cool, because they're far away. Actually, because the sun's getting much bigger, they'll actually become warmer than they are at the moment as well. Uh, but again, you don't have to worry about that. There's going to be a, a good a good long time until that happens. Go on, tell us what good long time means. Uh, it's about four billion years, I think. Okay. So in about four billion years. Um, so nothing to again. Nothing that we're going to see in this, no, in this exactly. lifetime. Okay, thank you, Matt. But we, we can do some more questions about black holes later. But um, before you guys turned in, we were talking about Matt and his career. Um, so Matt, would you like to just tell us again the story of what made you interested in science? Yeah. So when um, I was young, so I was about 12, 13, something like that, my parents bought me a telescope. So it wasn't a particularly amazing telescope. Um, again, I don't want to sort of criticize my parents. Christmas present to me, but it was really nice. Um, and I remember going out into the garden one night and um, I was looking at things in the sky and I managed to see Saturn through my telescope. So Saturn is the big planet with big rings around it. It's big rings of gas and dust and ice and things around it. Um, and the great thing is, is that even with quite a small telescope, you can actually see the rings of Saturn. So you see this kind of bright blob and then you see these rings going all the way around. It looks absolutely amazing. Um, if you look at Jupiter, Jupiter has moons. So like the Earth's moon, Jupiter has moons around it. Um, you can actually see Jupiter's moons with a telescope as well, which look um, absolutely phenomenal. Um, and I was just amazed. I just could see these um, planets and everything. Um, and you can see them at home if you have a small telescope or even um, a good pair of binoculars. Um, you can see that as well. So that's going to inspire Have any of you got a telescope or binoculars at home? Yeah, so you could go and try that. You could go and look for, look for Saturn. And then, yeah, tweet us if you if you um, get to see it. So, so Matt, that's how you decided you liked science. But then tell us, like, fast forward to now. What are you doing now? From do you inspired? You loved science. Then what happens? Um, so then I went off to university. So I did um, physics. Uh, I did astrophysics, um, which is like all the spacey physicsy stuff. And it's kind of like astronomy. So if you heard of astronomy, astronomy and astrophysics are basically the same thing. So I did that at university, um, and uh, yes, yeah, so I worked for um, someone called the European Space Agency, who are like NASA, so NASA is a space agency for America, and the European Space Agency for Europe. Um, so I worked for them for a while, um, and then I came back and did a PhD, which is when you, you study something for about four years, so you go off and you do some really, really amazing um, sort of science and research, and you, you look at something. Um, so I did that for, uh, for a, four years, um, but I now work in what's called uh, sort of science education as well. So I do things like this, or I go into a lot of schools as well and give talks on lots of astrophysics and astronomy, lots of space things. Um, I make some cool, if anyone's ever used virtual reality, so I make some cool sort of virtual reality apps where you can like explore the space station and things like that. Do you um, guys know what, put your hands up if you know what virtual reality is. <laughs> Yes. And Matt, Matt is very cool. He does those. If you look into virtual reality specs, he, he's a designer, software designer of the stuff inside. 
So Matt, just going back to a point there, you've got a PhD, so we can call you Dr. Matt Allen. Yes. Okay, but he's not gonna look at your medical conditions because he's a specialist in space, but he's doc a doctor because he did his PhD. Now, before I ask my further questions, do any of you have any questions for Matt now about him and his career? Do you want to put your hands up? Yeah, go on in the front. You parents, like, were they happy for you to be a scientist? My parents, yeah, yeah they they really really uh, like it. So. Um, they were really happy that, um, that A, I did something that I really, really enjoy. Um, I'm, I really love space and everything about it. So they're really happy that um, I did something that I really, really liked. Um, and it's a really exciting thing better to say that you're a scientist as well. Um, there's lots of interesting things you can know. Scientists means you know so many things that, um, you know, a lot of people don't ever get to kind of see or don't ever get to learn about. So I think they, they really like it, when I, especially when I go home, I can tell them all stuff I've been doing as well. Are they scientists? No. What do, what do they no. do? Um, so my dad worked for a bank um, and my mum worked um, a dentist. Um, so neither of them had any science background. Um, they, didn't, they didn't sort of, um, didn't do any science or anything like that. Um, which is why it's really interesting when I used to do homework. Um, how do you make VR sets? So, uh, so we buy the actual headsets. Have you ever used one of the headsets before? So we buy some of those. Um, but what I do is I make um, sort of the games or the programs to use on them. Um, so if you do. Um, Astrophysics, or you do physics um, at university, or even if you do when you uh, you guys are at secondary, um, you do something called computer coding. Computer coding is how you make sort of computer games yourself, or you make apps and things like that. So you have to do a lot of that to be uh, a really good scientist. So I did a lot of that when I was um, doing my heat when I worked for the European Space Agency, um, and then after I finished, I sort of. Um, instead of doing it to sort of do lots of research, it's like reality um, So yeah, when you guys go to secondary school, definitely, uh, if you haven't already, you can do uh, really important thing, computer coding, and it's gonna be something that's so important for everyone in the future. So um, it's definitely good to get into. Yeah. We'll have to choose, there's so many hands. Um, is that... Do you still have the telescope things on Jupiter with? <laughs> I do actually, yeah. So the problem is, is that now I live in the centre of Cardiff um, and sometimes it's a little bit too bright. So we have this thing called light pollution but because there's so many street lights, car lights, house lights, um, it actually means that we don't see a lot of stars in the night sky. Um, so actually I've left my telescope um, back with my parents who live um, in the countryside. So whenever I go home, I can use the telescope. You still have there. it. I do, I still have it. Yeah, in fact, I've never bought another telescope since I still use the same one I have. Oh. So, so I'm really good. But here in the university, so um, I work in Cardiff University and Matt's still here as well. Um, we have massive telescopes that, do you, are you allowed to play with them? Yeah, yeah. So um, when, I, when I did my PhD, when I was becoming a doctor, we have a, a big telescope in Hawaii, so uh, in America. And I actually got to go to Hawaii um, for a week, and I got to use the telescope there. It was absolutely amazing. So um, in Hawaii, it's a very, very nice. good. So there's another reason to be a scientist. Okay. Question, please. Have you ever, before you saw Jupiter and Saturn, did you ever think you were going to be anything else but a scientist? Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't think I ever um, thought about it too much. I always liked science. Um, I've I've always been <laughs> science maths. Um, but yeah, I think I've always wanted to do different things. Um, lots of different things. Lots of really different things. I always thought I wanted to work for the police at one point. Um, I always wanted to be a, a football manager when I was young. Football uh, manager. Yeah, in fact, I'd still like to be a football manager <laughs> if, if my uh, science career doesn't. Are go. you good at football? Uh, no, I'm probably better at managing football <laughs> than I am at playing football. I don't know, I just think some people think that scientists are not typically. <laughs> must have played oh, football. Oh, yeah, no, I, I, did, yeah. I did play a lot of football, yeah. Um, 
yeah, no, I am. Yeah, I play a lot of football, a um, lot of golf, cricket, rugby, everything. Yeah. Um, so no, I, I always wanted to do different things, um, and then yeah, I sort of started looking at space and just really loved it. I, I found it was really interesting, and I wanted to do more than just looking at it in my sort of spare time. I wanted to really. Um, yeah, we really go sort of further with it. So I decided I wanted to do a job with it. Excellent, thank you. Right, I think we've still got more questions. Amanda? Um, what's your favourite thing you've seen out on the telescope? Oh, that's really interesting. Um, so there's something called, um, so like I discussed earlier with galaxies, so galaxies are all these millions and millions of stars. Um, but there are lots of other galaxies in the universe. And um, one um, are called the Antennae Galaxy. Um, and there are actually two galaxies. And sometimes what happens is galaxies can actually um, sort of collide. They can hit each other, basically. So galaxies are normally really far apart in space. Um, sometimes they can crash into each other. Um, and this is some really amazing things. And they look absolutely incredible. Um, and so there are these two galaxies that are currently crashing into each other um, and they're called the, um, yeah, the antenna galaxies, or the antennae galaxies. So if you guys want to look at it afterwards, um, there's some really amazing pictures of them. Um, and so I, I do get to use some other telescopes um, as well as the one that I've got. And every time I get to use a telescope, the first thing I always do is I always look at the antenna galaxies and see what they look like. Because they just, to so, me, they look incredible. So if they're, so they're crashing, right? Yeah. How long is that? Because you're saying now they can go and get a picture. How long is that crash going to take? Surely it's going to take forever. Yeah, so it'll take billions and billions of years. Yeah. So, um, the slowest crash. Yeah, is is not, is you don't see them go into this. All we see is we see them sort of like this. Um, and since we've ever made the first telescopes, hundreds of years ago, they've always basically looked Been exactly crashing. the same. Yeah, they, we don't ever really see any difference between them. Right. Um, Riders Hayes, I can still see you're around, but we can't ha don't have any communication from you. So if you've got any questions, type them in and we'll, we'll do yours as well. Um, right, any more from Mr. Norman's class? Uh, how old were you when you started to get interested in science? Well, I was probably about um, 12, I suppose, 11, 12, something like that when I first got my telescope. Um, but obviously I did science at school, um, like all of you do, um, and I really enjoyed it then. Um, I really liked biology so at one point even after I thought I was going to do um, uh, physics in space I did think maybe I'd want to do biology I as well, well. Um, I really I really liked that so I, I've always quite liked um, science but yeah definitely around 12 or 13 when I got my telescope was kind of the first point I really thought I really really liked. Um, Beth? Um, what was your why do we send rubbish to black holes? Where do we send rubbish to black holes? Oh, we don't send any rubbish to black holes. So because they're so far away, um, we don't. We can never send anything to them. I mean, to thousands of years. Um, so we've never uh, been to black hole. We've, we've never sent anything to a black hole. Meant. How are you, man? How many years have you been doing your job? If I do my job, uh, so um, about um, so I went to university um, and I, I studied um, I studied space at university. Um, when I did my PhD, which is is, is basically a job, um, I did that for four years and I worked for the European Space Agency for another. So I was really doing um, sort of science and studying things for about five years, um, and I've now been doing. The kind of virtual reality and the, the space education to going into schools like yours and doing things like this um, three or four years now so um all together i've been doing space stuff for about seven or eight years okay we have some more questions um, what just happened i've got some i've got just two more to challenge you so what is the thing you're looking forward to in the future of your career what are you excited we've learned 
history of Dr. Matt what is in the future of Dr. Matt um, oh, That's a really good question. Um, so, um, I really like going to schools like yours um, and talking about space and getting you guys really excited about space and doing things like this. So, um, I'm really excited to see how things like we can use like virtual reality. Like, wouldn't it be really cool if I came into your school and said that what we could do is we could, I wouldn't talk to you about what it's like to be black hole. Right, so thank you. Um, any more questions from um, the schools? Did you ever think that you would stop being a scientist? Because it was too hard. So when I was doing my uh, my PhD, when I was becoming a doctor, I really liked, um, you know, most days I would use the telescopes. Um, I do really, really, really interesting science. Um, and there was kind of a, a point um, during that that I thought that I wasn't, um, I, I wasn't sure that I wanted to keep doing this. And actually, I, I prefer doing things like going to schools and talking to you guys. About it. So I sort of moved. Um, but when I was younger, um, I think as soon as I sort of decided that I wanted to do um, that, I was interested in science. I think I always, from that point onwards, I always really wanted to do it. Um, again, I did. Um, I was sort of didn't know whether I wanted to do biology, maybe, or astrophysics. So, uh, but I always definitely wanted to do science. Any more questions? Mr. Norman, have you got any questions yourself? Well, that's so many. I don't know if there's any left. I know. I don't think there's any questions left in the world, is there? Um, so I've got one more then, because we've still got four minutes. Matt, what is the funniest thing that has ever happened to you in your space career or job? Or um, oh, cricky. I don't know. Um, I... Um, I so I told you that I, I really like the um, the antennae galaxies. These are my really favourite things. Um, and once um, I I took some pictures of, of the antennae galaxy, and I, I thought I'd got these really amazing pictures, um, and I got them printed. So I got them printed uh, to take home, and I really wanted to put them on the wall in my office or something. Um, and then I printed it out and I paid for this to get printed and then someone in the office pointed out that actually I'd taken a picture of the wrong thing ah. and it was the wrong galaxy they'd taken a picture of. So I now have in my office, right by your desk as well, I have a picture of um, two galaxies hitting each other that I thought were the right galaxy but it turns out the wrong one. <laughs> so I told people for ages that's what it was. So yeah, even scientists get things wrong quite a lot of the time. So yeah. uh, it's absolutely fine. Okay. Right, well, I think then that's my questions. Um, you all look like you're all questioned out. So this has been um, a Space Link Hangout. It's been absolutely lovely to see you today and fascinating to listen to. If you have any further questions, feel free to give them to Mr. Norman and we can, we can sort you out with that information. This video um, is now gonna be uploaded. So that's exciting. Um, year five, Riders Hayes, if you're here, I'll give you a call immediately to um, kind of see what happens and see if we can sort you out. But yes, um, I think, let shall we give Matt a massive round of applause. Thank you, Matt. I'm going to go and Oh, look, I like the claps coming in from the side. Thank you for that. It's like baby shark. Anyway, um, <laughs> what was I saying? Um, I'm excited. Oh, I'm going to go look at the antenna. I'm going to look at his fake picture of the antennae galaxy and I'm going to go look at the antenna, antennae, antennae galaxy as yeah. well so that's something I'm going to do straight away and then I'm going to be buying binoculars to look at Saturn. So thank you for coming, thank you Mr Norman for sorting out your tech issues, it's been a pleasure and we will um, see you all soon maybe on another webinar but thank you, we've been Space Links um, coming to you today from Zoom, thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.